All right, the next problem we're going to do is number 57. One thing you might want to pay attention to is the change in notation. Notice we have h prime of t as opposed to before when we had dy over dx. Um, you can think of h prime of t in the alternate notation. You can think of it as a change in h with respect to t. I mean, if you wanted to think about it, this is really dh over dt. Okay, so we could kind of proceed the way we did in the previous example, but it's good to know how to handle different types of notation. All right, and then jumping over here, um, this is an initial condition. This is a point on the regular graph h, not this graph h prime of t, but h. So when you look at what's going on here, this is your input. So instead of calling it x, you can call it t. So this answer right here is h of t. So again, another way to write this in ordered pair format would be 1 comma negative 4, where this is your t value and this is your h of t. Just like it'd be x and y. All right, so the objective is the same. Let's find the particular solution. I'm not sure how they worded the directions, but they could have also said solve the differential equation given all of this information. And to solve a differential equation just means to go back to the original h function. Instead of using this notation right here, sometimes it's convenient to use this notation when integrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the equation. And I'm going to leave a little space here after h prime of t before I put the equal sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the integral symbol on both sides of the equation. Notice that I'm missing the um, extra symbol that's necessary, the second symbol, which is the differential. So right here I'm going to put dt. I'm integrating with respect to dt. And then over here I'm integrating with respect to dt. So I brought in the integral symbols and I brought in the same differential. It's a little bit different than the last notation where I had dy over here, a differential was already there. So I didn't have to bring anything in. Okay, but here I'm going to bring in dt and the integral symbol on both sides of the equation. All right, on the left-hand side of the equation, I'm ready to perform the calculations. Well, this is your integrand. And when I integrate h prime of t, I'm going to lose the dt and the integral symbol. Well, h prime of t's antiderivative would just be the notation h of t. So immediately I'm back to the original equation. Let's save the constant of integration for the right-hand side of the equation. Here's our integrand. Once we integrate, we're going to lose these symbols. All right, so I've got 8t. I'm going to increase the exponent by 1 to 4, and I'm going to divide by 4. And I'll take care of simplifying this in a later step. Plus, 5's antiderivative would be 5t, and then I'm going to have the constant of integration. All right, um, again, this is the general solution. Let's find the specific solution by using this ordered pair that satisfies this equation. So you can see that h of t needs to be replaced with negative 4 when t is 1. So I'll go ahead and clean this up. That's 2, and then t is going to be replaced with 1, and I'll perform the calculations. So let's see, negative 4 equals 2 plus 5, or 7. So it appears that the constant of integration would be negative 11. We're going to go back up here and find the general solution and replace the constant. So we've just solved the differential equation. So just um, take away from this knowing that solving a differential equation means solving a derivative means going back to the original function. All right, let's take a look at our final example. It's number 61 on page 256. Again, the objective is to solve the differential equation. You might um, just real quickly notice, too, that um, we don't have the first derivative. We have the second derivative. So to solve the differential, the derivative equation means to go back twice to the original function. And if that's what you were thinking, you're spot on. All right, notice the notation right here, too. So just kind of a couple things we want to do in this problem. Notice the change in the notation. 
uh, um, compared to the first two examples we did. This is the second derivative. Uh, you could write the second derivative as the second derivative of y. Oh, let me move this to, let me, no, let me start, All right, scratch that. You could rewrite this notation as the second derivative of y with respect to x a second time. And I know we're familiar with the, that notation. Um, in, in the objective that we're trying to accomplish right here, I don't, I don't think changing this notation to that more difficult notation um, would be easier. I would, um, if given this notation, probably translate that to this easier notation right here um, that, that we would need to work with in this problem. But I just wanted to point out that these two mean the same thing. It's going to be easier for us to work with this notation, though. So we've got the second derivative, and also notice that we have a second initial condition. And we need to have a second initial condition because I'm going to integrate not once but twice. And with the first integration, I'm going to get back to y prime or f prime. And um, it, I'm going to need to find out what the constant of integration is in that step. And I would have to find that first before I integrate a second time. All right, so just pointing something out here too with notation. Um, you know, we could write this as an ordered pair, 4, 2. But if you think about it, 4, 2, that's not very descriptive. We might think that that's uh, on the original graph or who knows. Um, but this notation right here with the prime notation really tells us that 4, 2 belongs on the derivative. Okay. Uh, if this is written this way, you would have had to have been told that this was x and this was f prime of x. Okay, I better put that back in. All right, and then over here, uh, again, that notation just represents the ordered pair 0, 0, and this is going to be your x and your f of x value. Okay, so kind of good to pay attention to the notation. All right, let's start the process of solving this differential equation. I'm going to leave a little space here so I can include a differential. So rewriting the problem, getting ready to bring in the integral symbol on both sides of the equation. But don't forget, it requires two symbols, so you need to also include a differential. So you might as well include the differential dx, because we're integrating with respect to x on both sides of the equation. And again, real quickly, remember the first two examples, um, we already had a differential dy over here, so we didn't have to bring anything in. So it's a little bit different, a little detailed, kind of something to pay attention to. All right, here's the integram, the f double prime. So when we integrate that, we're going to go back to the f prime notation. And that's what we need because that's what we're given. That's the notation. All right, coming over here, uh, it's a reverse power rule. So I'm going to leave a little space in front of my x because I know I'm going to have to do something here. But I'm going to increase this exponent by 1. So that would become negative 1 half. And that's actually what I'm going to divide by. But instead of dividing by negative 1 half, let me multiply by the reciprocal negative 2. And then let's not forget our constant of integration. This is a general, general solution. We need to find the constant of integration first. It would not be appropriate to integrate right now here first before finding the c value. We have to find c, plug that back in, and then integrate, get back to the function, and plug these values in. All right, so next step is to replace f prime of x with the value of 2. Okay, and looking at what x is, x is 4, but I'm also looking at this um, notation right here. Uh, I'm going to put 4 to the negative 1 half, and remember, to the negative 1 half means square root in the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and just take care of that. This is 4 to the negative 1 half if brought up, plus c. This is 2, this becomes negative 1. So now we know the value for c, our constant of integration for our derivative. Let's rewrite the derivative. And because I know I'm going to integrate again, I'm just going to leave the, um, this term right here in this, uh, this format. All right, we're not back to the original function yet. One more integration. 
So I'm going to bring in the integral symbol on both sides of the equation along with the differential in x. Okay, left hand side of the equation we notice that we're going to integrate the notation f prime of x. That will go back to f of x. Okay, here's our integrand here. Each term, reverse power rule. I'm going to leave a little space here. Um, I know that I have negative 2x, so I'm going to write that down. I'm going to increase the exponent to positive 1 half, which means I'm going to divide by a half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that right here. I'll clean that up in the next step. Moving on to the next term, plus 3 is the derivative of 3x, and don't forget the constant of integration. All right, let's find c by uh, connecting to this point right here. When x is 0, f of x is 0. So this is going to make this, is, this easy. So 0 equals, and uh, no sense in cleaning this up because you're just going to have the square root of 0, which is 0. So this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0 when x is 0. So c is 0. It's kind of nice. All right, and as a final step here, let's just... Uh, write that function down again. So f of x is equal to, coming back up here, I guess is where I was, it's kind of messy. Oh goodness, I had negative 4 x to the 1 half, so x to the 1 half, uh, positive 1 half stays up top, so square root of x plus 3x. And again, remember we found c to be 0. So we just um, solved the differential equation. We found the original function by integrating twice. Okay. So that concludes this section and what we're going to do in it.